What's that time of the week again? It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond. This is episode number 798 for August 6, 2024, and I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. This week, our guest is again the venerable Adam Angst of Tidbits. Welcome back to the show, Adam. Venerable? Have I gotten that old that quickly? <laughs> you know, I, I thought like about I looking have, it like, up. Fu Manchu beard. <laughs> I thought about looking it up. The problem with writing and, and talking to Adam is he's so precise that I've got to I got to really pay attention to my word choices here. Uh, You'd be the real time thesaurus. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Well, Adam wrote an article recently about a solar inverters that ended up being almost more a story about troubleshooting, and that inspired me last week to tell you my story of troubleshooting the net network. Uh, our home network problems. And we kind of thought it'd be fun to go through Adam's story and pick out ideas for troubleshooting and kind of maybe talk about where our own weaknesses are, where our blind spots are. Does that sound like a good way to start? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So talk about the, uh, the basic structure of what happened. Yeah. So, so the basic structure is Global warming sucks. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, <laughs> that 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 yes, this is real. And so I grew up in this area um, making hay on a farm. So I'm pretty aware of weather. And this and area the weather is... has just gotten insane. I'm sorry, upstate New York. Okay. So we we are in a world, you know, part of the world where I won't say nothing bad happens, but we don't get tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, forest fires. Like those aren't our problems. Uh, so, so, you know, like this has been one of those kind of situations where in the past five, 10 years, thunderstorms have become insane. Mm. And so when, you know, 10, uh, nine years ago, we put in solar power, we thought, <clears throat> well, you know, we lose power, but not that often and never for that long. So we're not going to mess around with one of those whole house battery systems. This was also nine years ago when they were more expensive and less used, less common. But we'll pl we'll put in some some power plugs on our on our solar inverters, and maybe we could plug something into them. You know, when when power was out for the grid. And so fast forward to the present, and we have lost power um, six times this year, four times in two weeks. Oh wow! So. I, I feel like I'm in, you know, the third world somewhere where, you know, like, you know, we have to have your 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 garage size generator for for everything because it's just like, oh, yes, we're on, you know, brownouts every day. So it was just kind of crazy. But the solar and you think of the solar panels as providing power. You don't think of them as having problems related to to uh, to power outages. Right. You know, like they make it. They don't need it. But, but, but it turns out the solar panels they... don't just like blow electricity at your house. There's <laughs> components involved. I was shocked at how many components are involved. Oh, yeah, they're connected. There's no question. Um, and um, but but there's one part of it that actually is a little bit more subtle than others, which is we have um, they communicate with a with web portal. And that's how you discover how much power you've made. If there's any problems with them, they report it on the portal. They also send the email, which I every day, which I kind of like getting because I can see, oh, good solar day. Oh, good solar day. Oh, that was a terrible solar day. You know? <laughs> uh, so in any event, um, uh, after an earlier power outage this year, um, they didn't the, the, the monitoring didn't come back online. So they were producing power. I could go outside and see the little graphs and they were making power, no question. But it wasn't getting to the portal. And because of, I mean, like this is, a, the, the portal is basically a way of keeping score, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is, you you want your points. <laughs> oh, totally. My my friends and I have all put in solar and we're always comparing our graphs and stuff going, ah, well, <laughs> you only got to, you know, so many kilowatts. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. So, so in any event, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little put out by this. And I reach out to the company that put them in, a company called Halco. And and they say, oh, you know, well, it's like, oh, we can send someone out. And I'm like, you know, like, I, I could probably, is there something I can just reset? You know, like, I'm, I'm sufficiently technical, I can reset things. And they're like, oh, well, if in that case, we won't bother to, you know, send a tech. If, you know, just do this, you know, flip, flip, flip. There's three inverters, flip those switches, flip three circuit breakers here, wait five minutes, reverse the process. Hang on. Okay, for, no for everyone problem. else, what is an inverter? What does it do? Ah, so the inverter. This is this is where I get a little on the iffy side. Inverter takes DC from the panels and converts it into AC for the house and the grid. 
Okay. Is that correct? Well, You're we more can of an say for sure uh, it's an ADD or D to A converter, whether we either of us know which yes. A is to D. That's why I always ask Steve, because it's just, I've got a pocket electrical engineer here, so I just ask him. <laughs> yeah, so basically they're the they're the the devices that the panels connect into that then do all the work of something or other and then feeding it into the house. Make it uh, electricity people you did can ask take out of the plug. Precisely. Okay. Um, people did ask me to uh, to uh, to uh, you know explain what I had at some point more, and I'm like, you really don't want me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a general view of this, but I'm really a computer guy, not a solar guy. Steve and so, I spent weeks trying to diagram our system so that we could explain it to people. And it and that was with, you know, I'm an engineer, I got a master's degree, but it's a mechanical engineering. So I'm impaired in some way in this category. But it, what we found was the more we worked on the diagram, the more we understood how it worked, because we clearly did not understand how it worked. I mean, I knew I didn't understand <laughs> at the beginning. Steve thought he understood. And now I yeah. couldn't explain it to you without that diagram in front of me. <laughs> So, so in any event, the, you've got all the all the power stuff, but then you've got these Ethernet cables that come out of the the inverters and connect one inverter to the next, and then they go into the house and they plug into an Ethernet switch. Wait, magic after that? Wait, like, Ethernet? What Ethernet? Is, because they got to talk. They've got to talk to the portal. They communicate with the portal. Okay, ours has a cellular modem on it. Oh, you're all fancy like. No, we have Ethernet. Yeah, the okay. pink, the kind of the peptobismal pink cables. Okay. Okay, good. Um, good to know what color so, the cables are. Um, that, well, they're not blue, which is the other question with, you know, your Ethernet cables are the blue cables, right? <laughs> um, so Okay. Um, so yeah, so 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 the, so the, after this previous power outage, I had to reset the system. Did did all these little basically flipping of switches, right? You know, it's just a reset. And did that it came back online life was good. So it happens again in the first of my four power outages uh, uh, this, this, this past two weeks. Um, and, um, and so I go do the thing, you know, the next morning, I, like, I don't think about it. The next morning I go back, I realize I get the email. I realize, oh, it's not working. I go back. I, I flip the switches, but the power goes out again that day. Oh, gee. oh so it so, fixes it again now a second time. But, well, no, no, but it I, don't, I don't know if it fixed it. So oh. I don't know if it fixed it. I, I I was I was busy. I was like I was doing stuff. So I reset it. I assumed it worked. And I figured I'll get the email tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually like log in immediately to see if the portal was working. Okay. All right. So so it, so it fails. You know, so the power goes out the next day, and I get the you know the email saying zero kilowatt hours. You know, produced. Okay, fine. It didn't work. So I reset it again, and the same thing happens. Right. Like I'm waiting for the email the next day. Um, and that was a, like a weekend. I was super busy. And so it took uh, the third power outage where I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, right. I'm still not getting the email from this thing. And the power again, power goes out. So by the time I've, I've reset it, it's gone out again. <laughs> like, yeah, what am I going to do here? Um, and so it wasn't until then where I'm like, you know, this is really not working. You know, mm. this is not just like a reset thing. I mean, I've done the reset correctly. I feel I'm like you're sure. a mouse in an experiment. Somebody's just pressing mm. the button to see if you'll do it again. <laughs> we gave him cheese the first <laughs> time. Let's see how many times we can get him to do it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just pushing the button, man, waiting to get my cheese. <laughs> so that was terrible. So, so eventually, I reach out to the to the company. It's like, like I've reset this. I've, I'm, I've, I've done my thing. It's not working. Could you send a tech out? Luckily, the tech can come out in a couple of days. He does. And, and this is this is where it starts to get embarrassing. This is likely, oh, oops. Um, and so so he goes out and he looks at it and he 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 bonks on them. The way you the way it turns out you get these these inverters to show you trouble to you know, like status information is you bonk on them. Are you serious? You literally knock them. Yes. <laughs> like there's a display that's blank until you until you whack it. it it's not blank, but it, it cycles through different things. <laughs> so okay. did you did you get this like, from like really? bubs and burgers <laughs> and, and hair care no, products? SMN SMA energy, I think they're German. So, you know, very, very precise. But uh but in any event, yeah, it's the strangest interface ever. So, you know, he shows me that and I'm like, ooh, good to know. And he shows me that, you know, they have IP numbers and everything. So, like from their perspective, they're doing the right thing. And they're not one sixty nines or anything, they're a reasonable well, yeah, we didn't look at them closely enough i think that actually i think they were 169s okay. uh, now that I, now that i'm thinking back to it 
To anybody so else says, who's okay, listening, well, 169 means, <laughs> yeah, you don't really have a connection. You, I'm just going to show you a number. self-assigned. Yeah. Yeah, it's a self-assigned IP number, and it usually means that there's no connection at all. Um, right. So... So, so we go in, he says, okay, well, from, from the outside perspective, it all looks good. Let's go inside and look at your thing. And so we go in and, I don't know, do you have like the little rat's nest of where stuff all connects up and you know, like it's device and device and all these little cables and power cables and everything? Well, we've got a, a, a box on the outside of our house where the ONT is, our, which is our optical network terminal from our fiber optic mm-hmm. company. And a lot of stuff goes in there, but it's not like where the router is. Where the router is, I've right. got as many cables as yeah. I can possibly cram behind that cabinet. Precisely. That's what I got. So that's where I am. So, okay. you know, so I've got all these, you know, four or five little devices. They're all got Etherneted into various things. It's the Eero base station and a couple of, you know, an Ethernet switch and a couple of little monitoring, um, Internet of Things monitoring tools. Yeah. And so... Uh, so we, you know, I say, hey, you know, here's the pink cable. It goes in right here and you can see it's plugged in. And as I'm looking at it, I'm going, and why are there no blinky lights? Uh-huh. I mean, everyone knows internet network networking stuff works on blinky, blinky lights. lights. Right, right. I wonder if you could yeah. take a light and blink it at it and it would work. <laughs> it's that kind of thing, right? So what well, device? you've got optical. You could, you... <laughs> <laughs> what device didn't have blinky lights? The ethernet switch. Oh, and so okay. this was the problem. There were like five devices back there, four mm-hmm. or five devices, and some of them had blinky lights. And so, like, I just was kind of, and this is like, this is kind of a dark corner of our laundry room. Like, it's sure. not a, it's just, it's where the, it's where stuff comes in in a certain way, or used to come in actually in a certain way. So it's kind of where everything lives. And uh, and so the, um, what happened was that uh, I had just looked in the dark corner, seen some blinky lights and assumed mm-hmm. all the blinky lights were on. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until this guy is standing next to me and I'm just you know, like, here's the cable plugs into why is this not getting any blinky lights? Mm-hmm. And so and so we, we it, but, you know, really others are. And so he's like, he says, oh, well, maybe it got fried. And I'm like, nah, it's plugged the into whole, a UPS. Like, the whole here. switch, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He, says, he says, oh, that happens. You know, I've seen that happen. I mean, it's like, oh, and I was like, yeah, but it was plugged into a UPS as I point down to the UPS right underneath it, mm-hmm. uh, which is clearly working because it has a light on it. And, you know, the other things are turned on. So, um, so then we, you know, we're like, oh, this is, this one's working. And there was one other of the little devices up there that wasn't working. And we, we start p- moving plugs around and, you know, and at some point I pull the UPS out of its dark corner and it has a master enable button on it and a light next to it, okay. uh, which is not the power button, sort of next to the power button. It's like button. a reset. Is it it's, a reset? Yeah, it's like a, just, a, just, a, just, a, just a preset. So master enable, it turns out, uh, as soon as I see this, I'm like, oh, crap, I know what's gone wrong. So this is, I've never really paid much attention to this, but. All UPSs, or most UPSs, consumer-level UPSs anyway, have this concept of a master or computer mode where you plug your computer into one outlet. And when that one gets turned off because the computer shuts down, it turns off power to other outlets. Oh. So you... Think of you've got a, you've got like I don't know an inkjet printer or something attached. You do not ever want to have the inkjet printer powered on unless the computer is powered on. Like okay. There's no reason for that to ever be true. Um, same thing with maybe like an external hard drive that has an external power supply. You know, things that like they make no sense to ever receive power unless the computer is running. Okay. So and so. Yeah. Okay. So, so this I, I've literally never heard of this, and I just did some UPS work yesterday oh. with a new UPS. Did you look? You have a you have a cyber power UPS, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so if you look at the back of your UPS, does it have, um, does it say something like, you know, computer here or controlled by computer with outlets like have that different, different I gotta go outline back and look behind at them? It again. <laughs> and then I can't guarantee that it's universal. This was an APC UPS, but I've seen it on others. Okay. Um, I, just, I just thought so, that like you've got the side that's, that's surge protection only. And the other side is surge yep, protection yep. plus battery. And so I put stuff like my Eero and my ring uh, alarm system and my Synology on the battery side. Yep. 
precisely. And but there's but there's another chunk, another v- variable, which is which ones are controlled by the master outlet. Master outlet. or can be. I mean, I again, I guarantee okay. this is all. <laughs> okay. So. So the problem, as soon as I realized, I realized what the problem was, which was when the power goes out, this UPS starts screeching. Right. I mean, oh man, are they freaking annoying? Um, and so, like, I know the power's out. Shut up. <laughs> and it's in a dark room, a dark corner of a room, which does not have any lights on because there's no power. Mm-hmm. And so I went into the room. Uh, presumably in the first power outage. Um, and I kind of reached around in there and I pushed a button. And it wasn't apparently the right button. It wasn't the power button that shuts off the power and, and thus the screech. And it was the master enable switch. And I probably figured, and I probably said, oh, that didn't do it and pushed another button, you know, and it turned off. And I didn't even think twice about it. I know I didn't think twice about it. So when the power comes back, and I turn everything back on, the Eero, which is the, the router, so it's sort of the main device, and I had that plugged into the, you know, the master outlet, the computer outlet, it doesn't draw enough power to turn on the other ones. What? Oh, yeah. my. but had, had it been plugged just, in this way all along? Yep. Oh, but, but you never enabled master that master enable mode. Okay, so master Precisely. enable doesn't have to be it, it, it exist. Doesn't have to be on, right? Doesn't oh. have to exist because 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 in just a situation just like this, you don't want it to exist, right? You no. want every outlet to be active because duh, that's the whole point of active outlets. So by enabling it, I had basically said, you know, look for enough of a draw on this outlet to that these other ones should be turned on. It, you know, the Eero, I forget what it takes is like, you know, three to five watts, something like that. It's tiddly. We um, and so it it's not enough to for the master and en- master enable mode to turn on the other outlets, which these two things happen to be plugged into, even though several others were plugged into other th- other outlets. And so it was it was absolutely a case of is it plugged in? <laughs> you know, but like the answer is, well, yes, but. Yes, but. <laughs> so somehow there, but there was an original problem. I mean, you made it worse <laughs> in, <laughs> in, in fixing it until it's broken. I, <laughs> but what, what caused it to I, be I, down I don't, in the first place? Well, so the, the problem was that, no, I actually caused, I caused the problem by pressing the switch. Um, it was just, I thought I was turning off the UPS. Instead, I was enabling master mode. And, you know, it, it was a mistake that took like two seconds, right? And then I like, oh, wrong button and pushed another button and that turned off the UPS. So that's why I didn't realize. And the reason, and because I did this when the power went out, it was never going to communicate. The communications were never going to recover because oh. that Ethernet switch that the inverters plugged into wasn't powered. Okay. Okay. So the, 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 when you press the wrong button was the first time the power went out. Right, right. Okay, Precisely. not the fourth. I thought it was this so, fourth time through. Not the, okay. not, the, you know, not the second, third, or fourth times. You know, like, who knows? I mean, you know, by that time, I'd realized where the power button was, right? You know, like, I've been turning the damn thing off all week. So. Right, right. Uh, and so... And and so there were other there were other hints really right if you think about it this because the switch is used was used for other things it was used for um, I have these little things called wireless sensor tags which do temperature monitoring and live in my fridge freezer and um, chest garage a chest freezer outside they weren't reporting um, but they don't they only report in error conditions so who you know, I wouldn't oh, no, go for I'm a month working. without. There's no I'm working right. They only report if the temperature gets too high in these cold, you know, these cold devices. Then there was a, a device um, that connects to our thermostat so that I can, you know, control the thermostat remotely from my iPhone. But you know, whatever. We it's it's on a it's on a schedule. I almost never bother to use that unless we're traveling for some reason. And I and even then I don't really use it because we have geothermal, so it's not you don't you don't adjust your thermostat much. Okay. And um, and then the Eero actually connects to another Eero on the other side of the house via Ethernet for backhaul. Right. Um, so it's a mesh network with a net with a wired backhaul. And 
Tanya and I had actually had a discussion at some point in the middle of all this going like, boy, you know, connectivity seems a little, a little weak. You know, why is the connectivity a little weak? I, was like, I don't know. I mean, I actually rebooted the, the, the Eero in my office. It didn't seem to make any difference. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, but basically our, com- her computer only uses Wi-Fi. Mine can use ethernet or Wi-Fi. And I just didn't, I didn't notice, like, it doesn't tell you which network adapter is active. So I hadn't looked to see. And so all of these little things had sort of gone wrong, but none of them were the kind of thing you'd notice. All I noticed was the inverters. Okay. Okay. So if your if your Eero wasn't drawing enough power to keep the other outlets on, it was still drawing power? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the, the Eero the, was powered the from the UPS. Oh yeah. The ear the that 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 master computer outlet okay. gets power regardless. It just shuts off the other ones. So uh, when did, it doesn't have enough. Okay. So you uh, you've got two ethernet cables on that one coming uh from your ISP and the other one is from the switch or do you have do you have a connected to yes. the switch? Okay. So Yep, precisely. The Eero, the Eero gets connected to the cable modem, and the other, the other one goes to the switch. And then the and that one going to goes... the switch wasn't working either. Okay, so the, oh, so the other, the other Eeros were were only using Wi-Fi backhaul. They didn't have wired Ethernet anymore. Precisely. Okay. Precisely. But that's just sort of that one's uh, so subjective, right? Seems cruddy, right? It's kind right. of dodgy. You precisely. run a speed like, test, yeah, huh? you know. Yeah, you know, and like it's, it worked fine for internet most of the time, but you know, like you just you never quite know. Um, yeah. You know, the network's being a little flaky, and you know, on cable modems, uh, my experience with cable modem is is the the speeds vary widely. Right, right, um, right. You know, Bob down your, the street, your neighborhood is streaming uh, Roblox right now. You know. <laughs> yeah, precisely. So, so, so it was it was a it was it was you know one of those situations where I was like, I cannot believe that I completely missed. Is it plugged in? Because I should have seen that it didn't have blinky lights to begin with. It was more that I wasn't looking closely enough to see that the right devices had the blinky lights. Well, I don't know about your switch, but uh, I eventually looked at my switch because I was, you know, by this time I was checking to see if, you know, flushing the <laughs> toilet was affecting the network. Uh, but I looked at the switch and I went, oh, my gosh, there's no blinky lights. And I went, oh, wait, the blinky lights are on the back. So my blinky lights are not on the front because all the wires go out the back to be in that giant mess in the back. So I have to like put my hand back there to see if any light is reflecting off of it in order to tell us something happening back there. Um, and and it, likewise, it, it might, it, that means the switch is being on the back of the UPS. Why wouldn't the power switch be on the front of the UPS? Uh, the, 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 the switch that I touched was on the front of the UPS. So, um, but Which, it was a dark room. So, oh, okay. You know, this is this master thing. This what do you this call this master it? thing? Right, master power the enable. Master thing. enable. That yeah. is on the front. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like again, I don't know why they bother to put it on the front. It's not something you're going to press regularly, right? You know, like you know, put it put it on the back where it doesn't get accidentally touched. But uh, my Ethernet, my my Ethernet switch, like yours, does most of the lights on the. I think it has a. I think it has one light on the front, but it yeah. has most of its light on the back for each for each port. But um, because I don't actually, mine's mine's sitting on a shelf, and you're. I'm, I want the cables coming into it where I can see them. It's actually okay. fa- its back is facing out. Okay, well, so I should get all of all the blinky lights there. Yeah, and you're just that an was idiot, the then. that was the mistake. No. <laughs> <laughs> I had well, if, if there had been no lights back there i would have figured it out right away yeah but the fact that several of the devices the ones that weren't plugged into these two controlled outlets um did have lights you know i just sort of oh, like clearly there's power oh, I'm, I'm missing there. a subtlety so you're saying on the switch had power no some oh. of the other devices oh, some of the other devices sitting there plugged yeah. into the ups yeah had power so it was like two out of five were were dark okay okay and so the others being light you know again i was like just didn't i just assumed it, it turns out that a lot of troubleshooting mistakes come when you you just assume something is true without actually verifying it and, and as soon as i verified you know with this guy standing there standing there next to me that oh wow there's no blinky lights on my switch and this other device oh uh, they're not getting power. So I wouldn't have even known that that master power thing existed. 
Like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm going to look what <laughs> we're now down you to do. See. Well, I'm going to look and see if I have one. But I mean, I looked at all the buttons yesterday and I don't remember seeing anything called that. So I'm, I'm going to have to go take a look. So other other UPSs I've seen, um, I don't know if they have a button exactly. I, I, this is the only time I've ever seen it have a button. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't know how it is nor if it's normally more of a, a built-in feature or if there's some other way of enabling it, um, that they, that they provide. So yeah. I have not done a, a, a comprehensive survey of UPSs to, uh, to, to, to see how, how it varies from UPS to UPS. And we have another thing that we've been assuming that we are starting to think maybe we need to maybe do a little bit more verification on, but our, um, uh, one of the questions we have is why did the power go out on the UPS when it, when it lost power? Because we have a whole home battery that should right. never have lost. You power. shouldn't, you shouldn't have, right. There's no losing power there. <laughs> so what we don't know is, is it because the, um, UPS was failing or, and it somehow caused some weird side effect that it shut itself down as a result, or is that outlet maybe not actually on the on the battery? Because we weren't able to put all of our circuits onto the battery. We believe that it is, oh, but what if we're yeah. wrong? So that UPS becomes yeah. a lot more important. It, it is true. I have um, my my uh, my circuit breaker box is absolutely jammed full. I mean, to the point where I forget what we had to have an electrician put in, you know, more circuit breakers for something. He had to actually remove several and replace them with half size ones. Yeah. So that, which they have now. And, um, and then we also have this device uh, called an e-gauge, which it, it, it sits and looks, it, it ties into each one, well, in theory, each one of the circuits in the box and tells us what power, how much power that circuit is using. Oh, that's cool. Uh, it's really cool. Um, and so, uh, um, so they like, again, the inside of our box is truly <laughs> scary looking, <laughs> you know, I mean, the gray outside is fine. You open the door, it's not terrible, but you take the front off. You're like, well, ah. <laughs> do not, that, that do not touch. No, I highly recommend uh, doing your circuit upgrades with uh, solar in this particular order. First, pay a crap ton of money to have a whole new uh, larger box put in so that you can accommodate the solar panels. Then six months later, change your mind and decide to add whole home batteries where they have to take everything out of that, uh, that giant box and put most of it into another box. So now we have this huge... Steve would say words with volts and switches and numbers and stuff on it, this giant box. And now there's hardly anything in it. There's like four switches in there and everything's in another (laughs) box. So we tried to pay for everything. Oh, and we had, we have this thing called a dog house on the side of our house. And that's where the, the, it sticks out. It's a box with a door on it. And that's where all the circuitry is. And we actually had to pay to have a new door put on it because they had to expand it because you couldn't get in and out of that giant box. Well, now you don't need to get in and out of that giant box because all the stuff's on the other side of the wall anyway. Well, it's actually good to know that there's this doghouse concept because I said, I don't know if they'll be able to ever do anything else with our, with our electricity. Again, I just can't imagine there's room. Yeah. And um, we have uh, we have a Nissan Leaf. One of our cars is electric, uh-huh. um, but we've only we only have it just plugs into one ten. We don't have a charger, uh, you know, a, a level two charger for it. And so, what all this has gotten me thinking about is, well, you know, sure those whole house batteries are kind of cool, but wouldn't it be even cooler if you had the whole house battery with wheels where you could go and recharge it somewhere else? Yeah. And so the vehicle to gr- vehicle to grid stuff, and so. It's not quite there yet, but once you've got a bi-directional charger, you should be able to, you know, just be charging your car. And then when the power goes out, it just reverses and starts feeding the house from your 70 kilowatt hour battery in the car. Right. That's that's what's really ironic to us is we paid uh, ten thousand dollars a piece for I think they're twelve and a half or thirteen kilowatt hour yep. batteries when we have two seventy five thousand or 75 kilowatt hour batteries sitting in the garage, you know, and yeah. uh, one of the interesting surprises to us, and this was part of us drawing the diagram that we figured out was 
um, when we when we figured out the circuitry of what goes on the whole home battery, we had to eliminate certain things and basically things that have high power draw, like like the oven is really bad and, and charging the cars. So we wouldn't be able to charge the cars from these little wimpy batteries. And uh, and that was fine. We understood, okay, we won't use the oven. We don't bake or cook anything in it anyway. I think we heat <laughs> plates with it. And, and obviously the cars, that's fine. Uh, we got a, a heat pump system that's a variable speed, so it doesn't have this high kick of whatever those are, volts or watts or whatever. So current, maybe current. Uh, amps, that's probably it. Um, Steve's going to yeah. kill me when he hears this, but uh, it, it doesn't have this high draw up front. It, it comes up slowly, so we could actually have our air conditioning on the battery, which is cool if necessary. What we didn't realize was that if the grid is up, and we're generating solar energy from the panels and we're going, putting it into the grid, the battery, or into the battery, I should say, the battery can power those things. It's only when the, when the grid is down that the battery can't supply power to the oven and to the cars. Oh, so we can charge okay. our cars from the sun without sending right. it out to the grid and taking it back. It can go into the batteries and it can come straight from the solar. We can actually uh, uh, do it because it can draw enough. I guess the current level thing works fine as long as there is a grid to fall back on. Yeah, it's pretty clear this is this is an extremely complicated thing. And, and I suspect, you know, that basically when we want to go to a level two charger, um, for uh, uh, some sort of new electric car to replace the Leaf, which is a 2015 model, same as our solar panels. Um, the we will, my guess is they're going to say, "Oh, you don't have enough power." Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. that's just it's it's almost cer it's almost certain there's there's going to be something which is not not going to work in a big way. I'm just, 100%. just I'm just I'm just I'm 100%. setting the expectations there for myself. Yeah. Um, so you know, so it's not going to be the like the three hundred dollar electrician visit. It's going to be the five thousand dollar electrician visit. So yeah, it, you know, it, I got to gird get a little myself. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the funny thing about uh, the whole home batteries <clears throat> is they don't actually. They don't actually save you money, at least where I live, the way our power works. We get paid for every or every kilowatt we put into the system. Kilowatt, kilowatt hour? I don't know. Every unit of electricity we shove into the grid and we bring back, it's 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 kilowatt to, to kilowatt. I mean, it, it's it's the same right. unit. So if we if we generate one unit during the day and we take that same unit back at night, it's it's zero sum game. If we generate too much electricity, then we only get paid pennies on the dollar for it. But for the rest of the time, it isn't. So yeah. the battery doesn't actually save us any money the way the, the solar panels do. So there is no ROI. But if you live somewhere where the power actually goes out a lot, then there's ROI from a personal level, right? Right, right, precisely. Yeah, I mean, there, there, I mean, some people can do, you know, sort of uh, um, time, time arbitration. You know, where mm. if you can charge your batteries when, on cheap power and then use them on long, on on expensive power and things like that, but like when you're yeah. when you're mo making most of your power via solar, that doesn't usually help in a big way. Yeah, we actually it's uh, the cost is double. We have a special plan for people who have solar panels, and the cost is double during from four to nine for what it is the rest of the day. Right. So we go off battery between four and nine and we just, you know, don't run the dishwasher, don't charge the cars, that's it. And so that does save money. We are also part of a, a, a system in California and I know other places are doing it too, where during uh, high energy needs, like if it gets real hot in LA, they will pay us to get power from our battery. So we make like $2, uh, what are the units? <laughs> Kilowatt hour, hour per fortnight, as I like to call it. Um, I'm not, I don't even for, try anymore. For a long per per <laughs> for a long per, uh, per per quadrant. You know? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so we get paid two bucks, where our power is normally like twenty six cents for that same unit of energy. So we actually we've made like oh, sixty dollars wow. so far this year. <laughs> so twenty thousand wow. dollars in batteries. We're 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 burning that. We're, we're making it. So back to the troubleshooting though. It, <laughs> You you tried to blame yourself and say it was embarrassing. I mean, it was embarrassing that it wasn't the solar people's fault. But from the big picture, I feel like there's a little too much to know. I mean, you and I are reasonably clever people, reasonably well-educated in this nerd stuff, right? We're pretty <laughs> good at it. Um, I don't know if you Except do. for the power, the power unit things. I don't the do units. the power unit stuff well no. either. Well, yeah, they right. shouldn't yeah, put, units are tough. <laughs> they shouldn't have put the word hour in something that does isn't time-based. That's why I can't ever do it right. <laughs> um, 
but but as much as we know, and Steve and I are, you know, controlled experiments, man. We we change one thing at a time. I document, he doesn't document, but I document, we change this, this happened, we change this, this happened. And it still took us four months, six months to figure out what was wrong yeah. with our network, that it was a, yeah. a dodgy power supply. Yeah, no, it's really true. And, you know, I... <sighs> It hits me a little bit more with some of the computer, you know, the Mac and iPhone stuff where, you know, like my parents or my in-laws will will have some problem. And I'm just like, I I know the answer to this because of who I am. And mm-hmm. I can solve it in 30 seconds because of that. And you would stand no chance. <laughs> just none. Like, you know, you would you would never solve this problem. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like you could you it, it's just not possible. And and it's funny because it goes back to the um, you know, I, I got started doing this stuff in the you know the mid '80s, uh, working with computers, and started tidbits in, in early '90s, 1990. And we always sort of believed that like we we're evangelizing technology, and you know that that if we worked at, at, at telling people how to use it, we'd all get better at it, and technology would get easier, and it would be become really it'd be widespread, and everyone like the world would be good. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we were young and naive, um, but but I, I kind of believed that for, for, for a long time. And, and at some point, I actually did an article on Tibbets about this. This is quite some while. While Google did these videos uh, in Times Square. I can't remember the details. It was something like, what's a browser? Um, or something like that. Or, mm. and, and they were just asking, like, you know, it's like person on the street interviews. Um, and, and it was absolutely eye-opening, the level to which your random person in Times Square couldn't even begin to answer this question. Right. And, th- and this was a while ago, but but still the, the internet and the web had been around long enough that there was not, it should not have been surprising. They were all using one, put it that way. Right, right. Um, and and it was that, I remember, I have to look up this article now because I remember, I re- it's like I realized that, no, there's always going to be geeks. <laughs> yeah, you know, that there are gonna, you know, that, that that there really are people who are good at tech and people who aren't. And yes, there's lots. Of, everyone who's who isn't good at it is still going to be using it. But they're the people who only learn how to do something when their friend shows it to them. And, and I, you know, I think and, there's, and a, there's yeah. a, a second quadrant. It's not just uh, it's not just left half, right half. Get it? Don't get it? It's want to get it and don't want to get it. So it's, oh, it's, it's a, Absolutely. it's a four yep. square, right? Because there's people who yeah. don't want to get yep. it and aren't good at it. There's people who don't want to get it, but they could, they just don't want it. Yeah. That to them, this is just yeah. a tool. They don't want to know how the hammer was built. They just want to know, I'm going to go hit some nails. Is yeah. this going to work? That's all they care about. And in fact, I think when people like us talk too much to them, they want less and less to know about it. You know, <laughs> like I'm never putting an IOT device in my house ever in the ever because of what the story you just told me of how long it took you to fix it. And you know what you're doing and I don't care. Yeah, right. <laughs> the other and, it, and it's funny because you can't always identify them either. So for instance, I have an aunt who's, you know, she's, she must be 70, I think just about. And, um, and, you know, but she is, you know, and she, she, she talks a good game of like, Oh, helpless little me. I don't know what to buy. Can you help me get this or help me set this up or whatever. And every time I do, I'm like, you're actually really good at this. You know, like, <laughs> you know what you're doing. You're just playing the kind of like, you know, uh, uh, not really like, not that I'm a dumb blonde kind of thing, but like she's playing the, I need help yeah. card. Now, does she um, know she's playing it or is she playing it for a reason that she thinks she's not good at it? Don't know. Um, but it really is a situation where, um, I suspect there's a little bit of she knows she's playing it because she's she was a you know a very high level professional um okay. before she retired you know okay. so like it's it may be a little bit of an act of being a a woman in a high level high level position of sometimes this was a useful game to play. The reason I ask is because I have known people where as i'm I'm watching what they're doing, I realize they they do know a lot. And I'll never forget my sister-in-law. I said, man, you know what, Linda, you're, you're a geek. And she went, oh, am I? And it was, it was wonderful <laughs> because she actually, I think she thought that she kind of knew what she was doing. And then she was really emboldened that I would give her such a compliment. Yeah. And that's when I realized yeah. that is a compliment in our world. 
Um, <laughs> but I, mean, I remember one of my favorite people of all time is a guy named Harry. He was um, 93 when he passed away. And I, I think I met him when he was in his mid to late eighties. And uh, I remember he was, we were hanging out watching a soccer game and uh, one of my kids and he said, uh, Hey, so Allison, can you explain what this whole thing is about screen resolution? <laughs> I did not expect that That's to come right. from him, you know, and, and <laughs> but he was genuinely curious and wanted to understand. And this was somebody who maybe wasn't yeah. terrific at technology. He was actually, what was the, the TV box you could get that like you hooked a box to a TV and you got uh, internet on it, like home TV or something oh. like that. You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to say TiVo, but that's not quite right. Um, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It was web TV. Web TV. Yeah. You had a web, web TV. TV box. But Neuron was... fired. Neuron <laughs> fired. <laughs> web TV. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. So, um, but the, yeah, it, it's really true. And, and so, so yeah, so, so it, it was, it was a little bit sobering to come to this realization that there's always going to be a role for people who are good at it and find it interesting and enjoyable to solve the puzzle. Like, I don't need to do Sudoku or Wordle or whatever. I got networks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I do like thinking about the, uh, the troubleshooting and the steps that we go through and I think of all of the things that I do troubleshooting on the networking stuff. Like you said, uh, when Tanya's like, Hey, the network seems slow. And you're like, yeah, you can spend the rest of your life trying to figure that out. Or you can go, huh, maybe it'll go away. I'm just going to wait. And, and sometimes it does. So, yeah. And we just had another one actually, uh, just yesterday. In fact, um, People were visiting, and um, Tanya's computer. Uh, Tristan was using Tanya's uh, studio display, so with his computer. So he'd unplugged it from her Mac Mini, and she'd turned off her UPS, and things had gotten unplugged. She didn't want the lights on when people were sleeping in the room, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So mm -hmm. he had to kind of reconnect all the cables, and I think Tristan had reconnected some of them after he was done. But and, and so her, basically everything was turning on, but there was no 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 video signal, hmm. and. And, uh, and, and it, I was like, it's all connected. I can see, you know, like the, here's the Thunderbolt cable going from the Did back of the studio light? display to the Mac Mini. <laughs> well, you got the little, a little bit of light when you turned on the power to the studio display. It, it says it's dots in the middle. Um, and so it clearly was getting power. And it wasn't until I, 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 I looked at it more closely that I realized the studio display has one Thunderbolt display and three USB-C ports, <laughs> which are identical except for this tiny little lightning icon over the one which on you can back. barely see because it's on the back. Yeah. <laughs> and Tristan, Tristan had inadvertently, just probably just not all really in. thinking about it, but played plugged in the Thunderbolt cable to one of the USB-C ports, and then it wasn't, you know, it doesn't carry video to, to the studio display. So a very easy fix. But it took us a good five to eight minutes or so before we'd like worked out all of the things going on. And like, like she knew this had worked, you know, two days before. So like so it's it had not to. like something could have broken. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but again, you know, not a not an easy thing. And I could I could really see that throwing someone. I used to we had an elderly neighbor who I was helping before she moved to an assisted living place. Um, and uh, and she often wanted me to come over and just like put connect cables. Mm hmm. Because she, and, and she, it wasn't like she didn't try, but right. she didn't have enough of an underpinning to know of like what's input and what's output, that kind of thing. She'd just like plug things when they seemed to fit. And uh, <laughs> I have and a blog so, post yeah. entitled "Just because it, just because you can plug it in, doesn't mean it's going to work." <laughs> and it it was something <laughs> along those lines. One of my favorite times with Steve's mother was um, uh, Steve's mother is actually really good at tech stuff. And she'll try, and Steve's dad is the other way around. He takes a lot of hand-holding, and, and it's – I call dibs on helping mom. Steve helps his dad. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they, she, we had ordered a new uh, airport extreme for them. This is many years ago, and their old one was failing. And, and she got it, and she said, okay, when can you guys come down and put it, plug in? And I said, you're going to do it. 
And she's like, what? Okay. So I had her tell me like, okay, what color is that cable? You know, is it, is it the pink or is it the blue? Is it the yellow? <laughs> I want you to pay attention. Write this down. Where is this one plugged in? And she was, she was probably in her, uh, I don't know, early to mid seventies and she's crawling around under the desk and she plugged it in. And then she, I had her walk into the room where her husband was with her laptop in her hand, showing that it was on the internet because she had it on Wi-Fi for the first time. And it was like this big, glorious moment. So that's somebody who doesn't know a lot, but is willing to try and is pretty good about, you know, describing to you what's going on so that you can yes. help them. That, that's the other thing. That, Some people aren't good at telling you what's wrong. It doesn't like, like me. It said something. Like, it said something. <laughs> like, well, what? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the one of the things I, I, and people suck at this, but I, I I love trying to get people to take screenshots. Yeah, you know, like you don't have to you don't have to remember you don't have to write it down. You can just take a screenshot and mm -hmm. then show me the screenshot, and I will undoubtedly know what you're talking about. Yeah, but if you just, uh, my, you know, my father is, uh, is that way. He has he has terminology issues, mm -hmm. um, so like he can describe what he's seeing, but not in terms that you will be able to figure out. Yeah. Um, because they're just different from what you're expecting. And so, so, you know, like there's a lot of the kind of translation of the, oh, you mean the dialogue, not the window, the menu right. bar, you know, that. Steve's dad so, goes the so other way. It, he types into an email every single thing he saw on screen. I mean, no matter what it was, it could be his bank statement was up and he's going to tell you how much money he has, but whatever it is, he's going to type everything. So you have too much information. Um, right, right. So, there is something I'm going to be curious about. So one of the new Apple intelligence features coming in iOS 18 and I and Mac OS 14, 15. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's going to be in Mac OS. Interesting question. Theory is in theory going to know about Apple, how to do stuff, tech stuff. Hmm. And I assume that Apple is basically training it on the entire Apple knowledge base. Uh. So you can you can ask Siri, for instance, and I'm like, how do I hide photos, you know, hide images in my photos app? And it will tell you about the hidden album. Yeah, you know, which is not something you're gonna figure out any other way, right? You know, right. like you know, that's that's not something that's you know, you know, gonna necessarily pop. Right, non-obvious stuff. And so I will be curious to see, and this is probably going to be one of those features that doesn't ship till 2025 or whatever, because I think the, the fully capable new Siri is, is on the far end of the Apple intelligence stuff. Um, I will be curious if that actually helps with support loads for people who, you know, people can be trained to ask Siri. So and if, if the AI ask is good enough language, to their terms. Natural language, right. not necessarily knowing the, the real terminology. Yeah, because I know what theory, I'm going to do it for. You know, I'm going to yeah. do it for system settings. <laughs> you know, where did you bury where, where it today, they Apple? They put? <laughs> what did you call it? Oh. Now, they have to keep using oh. all of the terminology they ever used. One of the things I was complaining <laughs> about recently was in Apple Contacts, I was talking about, I was going to explain to somebody how to make groups. And I, I was looking, I couldn't find the groups menu. And I realized, because they changed it to call it lists. Okay, I'm all right. I'll go into list. And then I go into some other menu and it's called groups again. <laughs> okay, you have to keep all the words you ever call this in the in the system. You gotta keep <laughs> calling things bonjour, okay? <laughs> yes. Well, again, and in theory, if it's trained on the whole knowledge base, you know, and then tweaked such that it prefers newer things, for instance, yeah. it should be able to do that kind of stuff. So if it so, if it knows about uh, archived report like words like system preferences yeah. but it'll yep. drive you to precisely uh and it yeah. should know what os you're running so if you're still on mojave yeah 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 oh, but no so, it won't it won't have apple intelligence never mind they can start <laughs> forward a little bit that's forward. right it won't know it won't know that it'll only it only know sequoia yeah but but you could ask it in 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 mac os you know mac os 10 point which one was mojave 15 nobody knows i don't know. i can't remember I can't remember anymore. Um, too many far back. Uh, I only go to Big Sur. Um, but yeah, so in, you know, Mac OS 11, Big Sur, what is the case? You know, in theory, it should be able to do that. Yeah, that would be that would be interesting to see if it can do any better. I don't know if it'll ever tell us that uh, you push the wrong button on your UPS or the power supply cable is failing on your Eero <laughs> that you're not even looking at. Oh, you, I, that was the other thing I want to say when you were talking about screenshots. The uh, 
I first had my house uh, sitter and uh, his dad come over and take a look at the network to figure out what the heck was going on. And they took a picture of everything in my electronics cabinet area, but it was a still photo and I didn't notice there was no light on the Euro. So all that had to happen was unplugging the Euro from the UPS and plugging into the wall and the network came back up. A lot of other stuff was still messed up that we had to fix, but at right. least there would have been a network pipe into the house that I could have gotten to. But because he took a still photo... And I think the lights happen to have come on on the on the Synology. So I was like, well, the Synology is up. What could be wrong? So here's a question. If you have the whole house battery, which presumably switches very quickly, why do you use UPS at all? I don't know. And in this case, it hurt us, right? <laughs> I mean, big, big surge protector power strip. I don't know. And I, I yeah. think I know, it's, it's supposed to but again, it shouldn't, a surge protector, be no, too. But again, if you're on a battery, there should be no surges. It would be, it would it definitely gives you a big power strip. Yeah. But you could get a fifteen dollar power strip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I, <laughs> I think it's just sort of well, cuz it's what you do. <laughs> you know? We did have a a, a big I, so, power surge in the uh, I don't know if I think I've talked to this, you about the story before about how we suddenly had uh two hundred volts on one side of the house and forty volts on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> that seems wrong. <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't work out very well. But every single device that was plugged into one of those little $8 surge protectors that we got from Costco, every single one of those devices survived the power problem. Every single big yeah. device that wasn't plugged in one of those failed. So we lost our oven. <laughs> we lost our garage door opener. That's a little hot tip. Oh. Put your garage door opener on a, on a surge protector. Just screw it into the ceiling. Just plug it into that because we lost a garage door opener because of that. Yeah. And then that was before you put in the whole house battery? Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 So, so I don't, what I don't know. That's a good about question. The whole what house would have happened in that though? Cause we didn't lose power. We might still have gotten 200 on one side and 40 on the other. My suspicion is, is again, I don't know how the batteries are, are exactly connected, but I mean, sort of the way my understanding of UPS is, um, and there's different varieties of them, and I, I would have to go back to the research to that, but at least some of them, you're always actually running from battery. Oh. And the battery is always being recharged. And that's how they get around the surges, because the battery is never going to feed you more. Okay. Um, and I think that's a, the house? slightly more expensive ones. Yeah, and that's, that's the question is, is because you have, what, Tesla power walls? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the question. The, the Tesla power walls, um, basically, are you always running from battery and, and then charging them on the back end? And if that's true, then yes, it would protect you from the surge. And in theory, there should be no, there'd be never be a drop when you lose power. Yeah. Yeah. But we if it's the other way around, if, if there has to be a switch, because that's some of the UPSs switch very fast. Right. So that when they lose power, they notice and in milliseconds switch over to the battery. So I do hear. And so that in theory, that's enough. I've got a UPS under my desk on on, uh, the Mac setup I've got in my office here. And when we have a power glitch, I hear it click. So apparently the the external battery isn't picking it up as quickly as the UPS is. That would be a, that would be, it's possible. It's just, it's either not installed that way or not designed that way. I just don't know. Yeah. Um, whether how yeah. the how the battery whole battery ones, and it's possible that because um, I, I remember a couple of years ago we had some some of the one of the health guys here when we were fixing something, and he was like, "Oh, did you do you thought about putting in a like a whole house surge protector?" And I was like, "Well, no, because I have UPSs on on everything more or less." And I had so before I'd heard your story, <laughs> um, so I never really never really imagined the concept of two hundred volts, you know, going through everything. But uh, um, but so yeah, so that, that was that got was the thing, first thing that got me thinking about like, well, how does the power come in in different ways, and what would that do? And so yeah, so again, not really knowing much about power, <laughs> um, I, I I think there are different ways that it can be set up, um, but they probably are more or less expensive too. Yeah, yeah. Well, this has been fun talking about this. Now, this started out as a, a troubleshooting story, and uh, your your basic uh, message was don't assume. Yeah. And is it plugged in? <laughs> <laughs> well, but your stuff was, just, plugged it it was, was plugged in. It was plugged in. It wasn't turned on. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's, it's the subtle, is it plugged in? Well, yes, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, it, so. verify that assumption that plugged in means plugged in. I was just hearing, oh, I think yeah. it was uh, Adam 
Adam Christensen was talking on the MacCast about how he's got a dodgy outlet where his Eero is plugged in. And it, it's so dodgy that if his, uh, if his robo vacuum bumps it, it knocks it out. And so he'll just lose internet because the vacuum has been going around. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like, so I think there's a root cause you could work on there. You know, maybe an electrician yeah, ought to yeah. be coming out fixing that. Yeah, that that's, that feels a little tricky if the Roomba can take it down. But <laughs> and then is it doing it on purpose? Just say it. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a perfect place to close this out on a line like that, Adam. If people want to find you online, they go to tidbits.com, correct? That is indeed correct. And uh, all sorts of stuff there. Uh, working on some new articles right now about the new network utility. Ooh, that sounds it's just fun. a tease. There yeah. you go. All right. Well, we'll talk to you again on the other side of Africa. Oh, well, have a great time. And uh, let me know if you see any penguins. There are penguins there. You just have to go I, looking for them. In, in Cape Town, we're supposed to get to see them. We saw them in Ecuador and, of course, in Antarctica. So that'd be our third penguin. Adam's pointing at the penguin in his room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. And we'll, we'll talk to you again in uh, September. All right. Enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chit Chat Across the Pond Light. Did you notice there weren't any ads in the show? That's because this show is not ad supported. It's supported by you. If you learned something, or maybe you were just entertained, consider contributing to the Podfeet podcast. You can do that by going over to podfeet.com and look for the big red button that says support the show. When you click that button, you're going to find different ways to contribute. If you'd like to do a one-time donation, you can click the PayPal button. If you want to make a recurring contribution, click the weekly Patreon button. You're only charged when I publish an episode of the NoSillaCast, which, let's face it, it's every single week, so I don't charge Patreon for Chit Chat Across the Pond Light or Programming by Stealth episodes. Another way to contribute is to record a listener contribution. It's a great way to help the NoSillaCast ways learn from you and takes a little bit of the load off of me doing all the work. If you want to contact me for any reason, you can email me at allison at podfeed.com, and I really encourage you to follow me on Mastodon at podfeed at chaos.social. Maybe you want to talk to the other Nocilla castaways. You can do that in our Slack group at podfeet.com slash Slack. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.